I have a problem, and that problem is that I work too much. For the last one and a half years, I've been living in my small one-room apartment in Germany, and most of my days look like this. I get up early, I eat my breakfast, I work at my desk, I order food for dinner, I go to bed. That's it. You all know that I'm extremely passionate about my work, but that passion can also quickly turn into an addiction and take over your complete life. Don't get me wrong, I love my work, but the fact that I think about it every single minute of the day slowly started to stress me out. Literally during any time of the day, I would think about a new video idea, the development of a new product or a way to optimize my business. I started to feel absent in my personal life and every activity which wasn't tied to my business made me feel guilty because I thought that I should be working right now. I guess it's a common thing that in the world of YouTube, your personal life and your work life kind of melt together, but the fact that the distance between my bed and my office was no more than 2 meters didn't really help. I even turned my sailing vacation to Croatia into a film project because I felt like I simply couldn't afford to skip a day of work even though I felt really drained at that time. After moving to South Africa and spending the first two weeks locked into my Airbnb, editing videos, living off delivery food and not leaving my house once, it became clear to me. My life was out of balance. For this reason, over the last two months I made three big changes in order to restore that balance and get back to actually enjoying my life. <laughs> so one thing that always made it really hard for me to disconnect from my work was that I just didn't really have any meaningful distractions at the tip of my fingers. I mean, obviously you can just grab your phone or you can watch TV for a short dopamine hit, but actually meeting up with your friends and having meaningful conversations that takes timing, organization and also some effort to get there. I know this might sound a bit weird, but for me that was enough of an excuse to just stay in the apartment and keep working on my projects. And for this reason, I consciously decided to move together with friends instead of being by myself. After two weeks in Cape Town, my friend Gaston joined. I actually never met him in person before moving together, which is kinda crazy. But through the many Zoom calls beforehand, I could feel that we were on the same wavelength. Gaston is a super talented filmmaker from Argentina who creates videos on his own YouTube channel and films for brands like Beautiful Destinations. He's a really passionate guy who loves nature and the funniest thing about him is that he can bark like a freaking dog. My other flatmate who joined a little bit later was my good friend Gabriel, or often called Gabo, who you probably already know from my videos in Greece. Yes, he's the one who crashed the ATV and broke his arm. Gabo is a really funny dude who is a lot into personal development, runs a social media marketing agency and simply loves to enjoy life. One thing I immediately recognized when moving together with Gaston was how he pushed me to go out and explore. I was so involved in my editing projects that I completely forgot to actually explore the area around me and for this reason, we often just grabbed our backpack and headed out to explore new locations during sunset. So, we are right now out for a sunset shoot and man, I missed this. I haven't done this for such a long time. I'm here with Gaston. Gaston! <laughs> I just really enjoy being out in the nature again and, and really just kind of like filming and shooting without any plan. Yeah, it's insane. I mean, this view, we just walk like 10 minutes from our home and <laughs> look at this, it's insane. honestly blown away by these landscapes. This is absolutely insane. This is nothing I've ever seen. There are so few spots in the world where you have mountains and the sea so close to each other. I just love this place. I love it. I quickly realized that moving together with this stranger from Argentina was one of the best decisions as I finally had a friend who I could share both my work <laughs> and my personal life with. One week later, Gabo joined as well, and the gang was complete. Look at those waves. <laughs> all of the waves are just smacking against all of the rocks. Super nice to see. Being out in the nature after a long day of work really helped me to focus on what's happening in front of my eyes, instead of getting caught up in thoughts about the next big project or deadline.
Welcome to the lonely FPV life of Gaston Luna. He has been in a simulation for more than 10 years now, sitting on this beach, licking his lips. Okay, it's arriving. It was good? Yeah, it was perfect. And I gotta say, I really enjoy this because most of the times I just lock myself into my room, I just edit and I think that if I'm not gonna shoot for a specific YouTube video, then it's not worth it. But it's not a good mindset because moments like these, I actually enjoy those the most where you just head out, you don't have anything on your mind, you just kind of go with the flow, you see what looks good, you take out the drone, you just basically just have fun and enjoy it. And I really want to do more of this stuff because I really feel like this boosts my creativity like nothing else. Dogs just go insane when they see FPV drones. Look at this. Besides our little adventures, it was also refreshing to have short breaks throughout the day in order to disconnect from work for a few minutes. That's something which always bothered me when working by myself in Germany. I spent all day long in front of my computer without any human interaction, which ultimately made me feel like the days were just passing by. When it comes to moving together with other people, I was always a little bit cautious about it because obviously you're going to see these people every single day. I used to live in a shared flat with three other students when I was still working in my last job. And then after that, I lived for one and a half years just by myself in the apartment that you've seen a lot of times in this video. And in these one and a half years, I got a lot of things done and I grew my business faster than I could have ever imagined. But at the same time, being by myself also kind of pushed me to work harder than I already did. Yeah, it made me forget a little bit about my personal life as well. Obviously, that always depends on the people you live with. If you got hustlers, then probably you're just going to work all day long and you're never going to leave the office. While if you live together with free spirits, then you're just going to end up at every party and you get nothing done. And that's one thing I really liked about Gabriel and Gaston, that they're really passionate about what they do and they like to work, but at the same time, they're also able to just switch off and to just be 100% percent present in the moment. So before we go to the next point, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is BetterHelp. If you don't know already, BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service, which gives you access to more than 20,000 licensed therapists all around the world. 2021 has been an extremely stressful year for all of us, and that's why in 2022, I'm making an effort to stay in control of burnout in my career. And one of the best ways to do this has been to meet with my therapist, Jamie, at BetterHelp in the weekly live sessions. I've now been using their service for the past three months and it has literally changed my life when it comes to my mental health. So the thing is that finding a good therapist can be really hard and especially if you're only looking in your own city but as BetterHelp is online remote therapy it makes the whole process a lot easier. You get matched with a therapist in less than 48 hours and if you feel like he's not the right fit for you which can often be the case then you're always able to just switch to one of the thousands other therapists for free. It's not a crisis line, it's not self-help but it is professional therapy done securely online. You will literally be able to talk to your therapist in a video call just like you were FaceTiming with a friend and you can always send a message to your therapist at any time. I myself really think that therapy should become more accepted and accessible as every single one of us has some sort of inner demons that negatively impact our mental health in some way. I think that BetterHelp does a great job at this and on top of that they're also more affordable than traditional therapy. If you sign up through the first link in the description you will get 10% off your first month plus you will obviously also support my channel so make sure to head over to betterhelp.com slash nicholas check out their platform and give it a try to see if it works for you as well and now let's keep going Another crucial factor to be more balanced is the environment you live in. As I said, both living and working in my old one-room apartment made it very hard for me to separate between those two. I literally worked on the same desk where I had my breakfast, lunch and dinner. When the weather was good, I sometimes ate on the balcony and when a friend came over, we put that small table inside to eat. As I had no dedicated spaces for resting except for my bed, this ultimately gave me no real initiative to stop working. 
I would have honestly loved to have a small living room with a couch, with a small plant, just to be able to blend out my work for a period of the day and be able to focus on my personal goals, like for example, reading a book or just chilling out. Yes, chilling out <laughs> is my personal goal, but not for real. A lot of the days it was really me from my bed to my desk, back again to my bed for a quick power nap and then on my desk, which obviously doesn't really contribute to being productive, creative or rested because you're always kind of in between all of those things. Obviously, I also went for short walks or met up with friends, but all in all, in my everyday life, I didn't really feel comfortable in my environment. And for this reason, when we moved to South Africa here, the three of us decided to get a really nice apartment in which we would feel at home and where we would also have dedicated areas where we work, where we sleep, where we eat, where we rest and whatever you want to do. But that turned out to be a lot more difficult than expected. So, when I arrived to South Africa, the country just got removed from the COVID red list and therefore a lot of tourism started to come back. For this reason, all of the owners in Cape Town started to see dollar signs and switched their places to Airbnbs or only offered super expensive daily rates, even though we were looking for a place for six months. I was just calling with an agent and he said they don't have any any houses available. He told me it's like a crazy situation this year and that leaves us with a very bad starting point to look for our house. <laughs> Them. So we figured out that our best option was to just look for as many places as possible and contact the owners directly. Hola, tu nariz contra mis bolas. <laughs> what does that mean? Hola, it's hello. Guten Tag, my friends. I saw your listing on Property 24 for the three bedroom apartment in Camps Bay. I was wondering if it has is. has been taken off the market. That has been taken because it is rented out till the end of February. Oh, okay. Hello? Yeah? Does it work for you? Are you still there? Jenny? It's a friend of my mother. She lives in here in Camps Bay and probably she's gonna help us with this. She's also like an agent? No, she's not, <laughs> but she's trying to just to help. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have something, I have something. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only place Gaston came up with so far. Living in a fucking kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> We're freaking desperate. <sighs> Why? Why? <laughs> After countless letdowns, many days of research and no callback from Jenny. Are you still there? Jenny? We finally got really lucky and were able to close the deal for this insanely beautiful apartment. So let me give you a quick tour. As soon as the elevator door opens, you step right into the apartment. The living room has a super comfortable sofa and this big ass TV, which makes it the perfect place to watch a movie. When you go downstairs, you'll get into my bedroom. It has this really big glass windows, which lets you enjoy the view while chilling in bed. It also comes with its own bathroom and a shower. Right next to me, there's Gaston's room, which is basically just a mirrored version of mine and the bathroom doesn't have a window. If we go up again and head to the right, we enter the third bedroom, which is currently in possession of Gabriel, but will soon be mine when the first three months have passed. It has a huge bathroom with two sinks, two showers, but unfortunately only one toilet. Then if we go back and pass along the living room, there's a huge dining table where we often eat dinner and if you pass around the corner, you will see our really modern kitchen. It basically has more than you would ever need, but still, we order delivery food every single day. Right next to it, there's also a small balcony with another table to chill and enjoy the view. And then if we go upstairs to the third level, we have the fourth bedroom which we turned into our office. This is the place where we work and just like everywhere else in this apartment, you get a lot of light through the glass windows and have a an insane view onto the small mountain which is called Lion's Head. And now if we go all the way back to the other side, we have the absolute highlight of this place. The rooftop terrace with our own private pool and this incredible 360 view of Cape Town. I honestly can't quite believe that this place is going to be our home for the next few months. I feel like it is such a beautiful apartment and I am super grateful to be able to do that. But obviously it also comes with its price. The rent for this place is 65,000 South African rands, which equals around 4,000 US dollars. But as the three of us share this apartment, it is around 1,350 US dollars per person, which compared to Munich is actually quite cheap. Like you would never get a place like this in Munich. 
Munich for that price. Luckily, by the end of last year, the many months of hard work and locking myself into my apartment really started to pay off because this YouTube channel started to grow, my business started to grow. And with that, obviously, I also started to earn more money. And for this reason, I kind of asked myself the question, what things do I actually want to spend my money on? I don't really care about material possessions, like having expensive sports cars or a watch or any stuff like that. But I actually care about the things which positively impact my life. And for me, the place I live in is definitely one of them. Because I think that your environment directly reflects on your quality of life, your mental health, and also your productivity. The fact that I now have different spaces for the different activities that I do throughout the day just enables me to do those different activities much more intensively as all of those spaces are solely for that purpose. So the third and last tip to find more balance in your life is to define and live by a healthy routine. A good routine is basically about prioritizing your most important goals and pleasures and then assigning the right amount of time to those. It's super important that you're realistic with those time frames so you don't feel overwhelmed and rushed all day long because you feel like you didn't do enough. So when you write down those activities and time slots, always make sure to have a balanced and healthy routine because if it's not, then after a few weeks, you're going to hate it and you won't be able to pull through with it. So dedicate specific times to simply rest or to do whatever you feel like in order to recharge for the productive times. Routines are a lot about self-discipline, but the funny thing is that each of us needs that discipline for different things. Like some of us just need to push ourselves to get our ass up and get to work, while others need that discipline to actually make space for their personal life. Like me, for example. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, but discipline is not about getting the most done and being a workhorse, but it's actually about keeping your life in balance for a long period of time. As I'm definitely more on the workaholic side, I now try to integrate various activities to build distance from my work, recharge my batteries and simply enjoy the moment. For example, I now meditate for 10 minutes each morning in order to get my mind sorted and have a clear start into the day. I take a break after lunch to chill on the terrace, read a book or hang out with the others in the pool. Hi. And at 6pm I now have a hard cut where I stop working in order to make time for my personal projects, like exploring places with Gaston and Gabriel, learning Spanish or going to the gym, which I currently try to do three times per week, so that's good. When it comes to the weekends, I try to keep them free of work and simply focus on personal goals, hanging out with friends or simply resting. I basically set myself those boundaries because I find it very easy to get sucked into a work project and then all of my personal projects just get pushed back. Building a balance routine is a long process and it can often take months or even years because you just have to try out the different things you have to readjust it and you have to see what actually works out for you over the last two years, I learned that if you want long-lasting happiness and success, balance should honestly be your guiding principle in everything you do. Too much of one side will either make you feel oversaturated or undersaturated. Too much work will make you feel isolated and drained and too much free time will make you feel like you're lacking a purpose. I've always been a huge advocate of making shit happen and taking your life into your own hands, and I still believe in that. Action is needed and hard work does have its place if you wish to succeed and accomplish things in this world. However, the sacrifice should never be your life. Not your life quality, nor your presence or your happiness. You have to find a balance between making it happen and letting it happen. It's those short, unpredictable moments that make life exciting and give you new inspiration to create extraordinary things. Over the last months, I got a completely new perspective on rest. I thought that it wouldn't contribute anything to my business, but now I actually realize that rest is absolutely necessary to create at our maximum potential and therefore should be an essential part of our everyday lives. Reframing rest is the quickest way to stop feeling guilty when enjoying your life and I urge everyone who is a bit like me to be less hard on yourself. So adjust your environment, hang out with like-minded people who share a similar passion, create a healthy routine and give yourself more time to simply let life happen. Because in 10 years from now, who of us would want to look back and realize we were so busy working that we forgot about truly living? 
Thank you so much for watching all the way through. I really hope that you could take something away from this video. And I also wanted to quickly touch on the links that you can find in the description because I barely talk about those things. First of all, they're my signature LUTs and my signature presets. These are my go-to tools when it comes to color grading. So these tools will save you a lot of time and you will be able to replicate my look with the click of a button. Also, I'm doing a monthly newsletter so you can sign up for that as well. And you're just going to get one email per month in which I reflect about a different topic Topic and I'm also just trying to add value to your life. And last but not least, you can also get a creator pack, which includes a lot of different things which are going to help you kickstart your career as a creator, like for example, my Notion database, folder structure, a couple of presets, a couple of LUTs and all that stuff. You get all of this for free if you sign up for my newsletter, so make sure to check out those links as well. I hope that you guys have a great day and I'm going to see you in the next one. Peace out, bye bye.